Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome to a new gander today. We are going to take a gander at In Blood. Now, before I start this, I uh, need to apologize to Jamie. <laughs> this game's by Jamie Scribbles Games, by the way. And Jamie contacted me about a month and a half ago about covering this, and I was going to cover it then. And then I just got totally swamped by work and it, it never happened. But I finally caught up on some work now and I have some time to finally play this game. I was going to do it before the Kickstarter started, but the Kickstarter's been going now for a while. So apologies, Jamie. I'm glad I'm finally able to cover this and I can't wait because I've seen nothing but amazingness from this game on Twitter. Uh, so in Blood, um, well, before I get into the story of In Blood, Jamie scribbles, um, has also created Pinewood Island and As We Know It. So those are some games that have been recommended to me in the past that I haven't checked out yet. So you might know her from that. And this is the latest creation in Blood. As you can see, it's kind of creepy. And we got some interesting looking characters on our loading screen here. Um, or not loading screen, but main title screen. Um, so the story for In Blood is, after a night of drinking, Elia I think it's Eliodora. I hope I'm saying that right. Eliodora takes a shortcut home through the woods. She's angry, frustrated, and sad. At the crossroads, she trips and cuts her hand on some broken glass. While looking over her wounds, she mutters a wish out loud that calls upon an ancient and forgotten force that changes her life forever. She wakes up in an unknown room, in an unknown house, on an unknown plane of existence, surrounded by horrors and death. She must attempt to find an ally among the other occupants of the house. It's clear they don't have her best interests in mind, and trusting them could be deadly. Survive and try to maintain your humanity. Escape, if you still want to. Escape, if they'll let you. So pretty creepy, eh? <laughs> I'm intrigued, regardless. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting, I'm trying to find it here. Uh, do do do. Yeah, so this game also features a mutation system. And you have stats, such as selfish, selfless, uh, tame, and wild. And if you go too far either way, depending on your choices, you can mutate into something. I think that's fascinating. So, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of the background on this game so far. So let me just boop, boop. Okay. Everything is back to where it should be. And let's just jump into this game. Now, the demo, this is a demo, and it's uh, fully voice acted so far. Uh, I don't think the game is going to be fully voice acted, but that is one of the um, stretch goals, I believe, for the Kickstarter. So yeah, give it a listen. See what you think of these voices. I'm excited. This is a demo for the full game. Please enjoy. I will. Content warning. This game is intended for a mature audience. It contains violence and adult content in situations, some sexually suggestive content. For a complete list of content warnings. Warning, spoilers, click here. Oh, I don't want spoilers though. Okay, you've all been warned. Turn your eyes away <laughs> or forever hold your pee. Okay. It was another cold night. The wind blew through the trees, ripping at the branches and pulling the dead leaves down. I was drunk. Too drunk to feel the chill, and too drunk to fret over taking the wooded shortcut so late at night. Too drunk and too angry. I just didn't care. Several months ago, or shit, has it been a year? My brother had been slaughtered and now his killers roam free. Oh, well, this is a cheery beginning. They get to walk around, drink, fuck, and get away with all their bullshit while my brother's ashes get dusty on a mantle. I would have liked to make them pay for what they did. I went to the police, and they did nothing. As usual. I tried to rally the town, but nobody cared. I even wrote to some politicians, but they didn't respond. I prayed, but not even God would see that justice was carried out. Liquor helped. I had to use all my senses to stay on my feet as I staggered down the path. Thinking about where I stepped kept my mind off of other things. Ooh. A crossroads. It was a small hiking trail I had taken hundreds of times. I could easily get from the bar to my apartment complex without walking the noisy bright streets. 
It was a short walk to the crossroads, marked by a small old sign. Left towards my apartment complex, and right to go deeper into the woods. I stopped and stared down at it. The wood looked like it was starting to rot. It stood alone and untended in the darkness. I stepped towards the path that led home, but something caught my foot and the ground suddenly rushed to meet my face. Fuck! I had reached out to stop my fall and cut my palm on something. I hissed and sat up, looking at it over. A shattered bottle had been left near the path. Now I was sitting in the dirt, bleeding, and it hurt. It hurt! I chewed on my lip and tried not to think about it. To think about anything. But the alcohol was wearing off, and the cold was seeping through my jacket to my skin. And now my hand hurt. This was all their fault. I wish I could make those fuckers pay. My voice sounded so weak, and my throat felt raw. I breathed in and out. I crushed my heart hurt hand against my chest and considered getting back up on my feet. Things around me fell quiet, and I felt a weird... energy building below me in the earth. I glanced down, still slow from the alcohol, and then froze in terror. Careful what you wish for. The ground was starting to pulse as if something, or some things, were moving just under the surface. I thought snake and tried to jump up on my feet. But then a voice whispered directly in my ear, a voice unlike any voice I've ever heard before. The man who killed your brother. How well? I jerked away before I could comprehend the words. I looked around, but no one. Nothing. What the fuck? Had I imagined it? You want the man who killed your brother to pay. <laughs> I continued to search around me. I saw no one. The ground continued to writhe. I tried to stand up, but my legs wouldn't move. Is this some kind of sick joke? Speaking seemed to fix the paralysis. I managed to stumble forward and get on my feet. I was about to run, but the voice spoke again. Oh. How... what? Perhaps I had drank too much, or maybe I was losing my mind. The trees were too thin to hide someone, and it wasn't dark enough to fully obscure a body. They spoke so softly and so close. If it weren't for the pain in my hand, I might have convinced myself I was dreaming. The voice spoke again. It was close to my ear and sounded like a hissed whisper. I squeezed my eyes closed and tried to will the creature away. How do you want them to pay? I gritted my teeth, my heart hurting worse than my hand. This strange entity offered revenge? I bit down hard on my lip and felt a coldness cascade down my spine as the world seemed to fall silent around me. Oh yeah, it's quiet now. The woods felt so empty, and despite knowing, knowing, that I should run, go home, sober up, I didn't. Ooh. Our first choice. I want them to die. I want them to suffer. I want them to go to jail. I want everyone to know what they did. Hmm. If my brother had been murdered... <laughs> And they were just going around scot-free. I wouldn't want them to die, because then that's too too quick and easy. Yeah, I want them to suffer. I'm wild! Yeah! Alright, I'll take it. I want them to suffer. I want them to know my pain. And for this favor, will you give your blood? I don't know what Satan means, but... Oh, I think that was one of the characters that, like, there's four uh, romance options. I think Seda is one of the uh, romance options. So I must have got something with, with that person, whoever Seda is. I wonder if I should turn the volume up a little bit. Let's see. Not stats. How do I... Whoop. And for this favor. How do I... Oh, there we go. Uh, settings, there we go. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm gonna turn that up a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's good. Blood, you say? As it spoke, the world around me evaporated. I could still feel the wind and hear the leaves rustle. 
but there was nothing but a bleak void before me. My breath and heartbeat started to grow louder and echo. It wanted my blood? Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't. Say. It. Yes. Damn. Ah! Well, that's terrifying. What are you? Suddenly, the ground exploded and the earth was ripped open. Vines shot from the depths and wrapped around my legs and arms and then pulled. Okay, I'm still... Oh boy, I'm not waiting. still want this a little bit lighter. The main menu uh, music was so loud I thought I would be able to put it down, but then I couldn't hear anything. This is better. Suddenly, the ground exploded and the earth was ripped open. Vines shot from the depths and wrapped around my legs and arms and then pulled. Oh boy. Well, down we go. <laughs> Do I have to click now? Yep. <gasps> I was too panicked to scream and too focused on trying to free myself to consider what was happening. An invisible weight settled on top of me, pushing me down even as I clawed at the ground. I couldn't think straight. Was I being buried alive? What was happening? I love that the signpost kind of looks like a gravestone. <laughs> like, ah, this is our grave now. My futile attempts to fight the vines failed, and the ground swallowed me, plunging me into darkness. I wasn't falling. There was no breeze, no noise. I, I couldn't even hear my own voice. I couldn't tell if my eyes were open or closed. Was I screaming? I could feel myself slipping out of consciousness. What have I done? I made a deal with a bug plant. <laughs> Whatever it is. Click? Yes. I was somewhere different now. Somewhere soft, but cold. I pulled the thin bl blanket up to my chin, but I couldn't get warm. Wait. I opened my eyes and sat up in a bed that was not mine. I thought it sounded like a fire. What the fuck? Where am I? I pushed the blankets away and jumped out of bed. I searched the room, but I was alone. It smelled like mildew and felt damp and chilly. It had been colder when I had left the bar, though. There was a fireplace, but it didn't provide any warmth. Just the sounds of popping and burning with a heavy smell of smoke. There were windows, but they had been carefully boarded up. I picked through the blankets. They were old and frayed. Nothing weird was in the bed, and I was wearing everything I had been wearing when I had started home. I had my keys and... My phone! It was in my pocket! There was no signal, and the battery was almost dead. Great. I opened the map app, only to have it refuse to load. I tried to make a call, but was only met with silence. I glanced nervously at the door. Was it safe to venture out? Waking up in a strange, dirty, weird bedroom was... What had happened last night? I needed to think. Last thing I remembered was going through the old path, cutting my damn hand. I looked down and saw that it had been carefully bandaged. I poked at it and slid the cloth to the side to see the cut. Nothing looked weird about it. Still hurt. So I cut my hand, then heard a voice from an invisible thing, and now I'm in a weird room all alone. Okay. Yeah. This is fine. Totally fine. I shook my hands nervously and tried to think. I didn't seem to be in any immediate danger. All I needed to do was get the hell out of here. Maybe I had just had way too much to drink. I rolled my shoulders and decided to listen at the door. I took a small step, dreading to press my ear against what looked like swollen wet wood. Before I could, though, there was a small knock. I jumped back and considered getting back in bed, but it was too late. The door was opening. What a lovely bow you have. <laughs> when it walked through the door, I didn't know how to react. Um... What would I do in this situation? When I'm nervous, I laugh, so I probably would laugh. I'm wild! <laughs> I'm just so wild. Oh no, I'm gonna be in trouble. Is this my stats? I'm, I'm edging. I'm edging to wild. Oh no. 
I couldn't stop an awkward laugh from escaping my throat. <laughs> I stifled it as best as I could, but it was just so absurd. And he doesn't look, uh, <laughs> very happy. Or it doesn't look very happy. <laughs> Whoever was in the costume appeared completely indifferent to my reaction and utterly annoyed at my presence. He, or was it she, was a very short bird human looking creature. I am Eris. No gender. You can read thoughts? He, no. They waited, but I couldn't manage to make myself speak. I know you can understand me. I nodded. I didn't trust myself to speak. They sighed and set a package I hadn't noticed on the table. Food. Food! <laughs> Eat! Huh? I frowned, but didn't move or say anything. They sighed again. I'm sure you'll last long, maybe a few days. I like Eris already. They turned and started to walk out the door, so I shouted to stop them. Wait! They turned, frowning again. Now you speak! I don't know where I am, or why you are wearing that costume. That seemed to make them bristle. They flex and the feathers on their head ruffled. I take it back. You won't last a day. But I'm wild, Eris. Please, I... You struck a deal with Nyarbalta. Do you not remember? I was wondering how you pronounce that. Thank you. A what now? A deal. With Nyarbalta. Do you truly have no memory? For a moment, they actually looked a little concerned, but covered it quickly with a look of disdain. I remembered it if I focused. A voice in the woods. I was drunk, angry, and it had promised me revenge on my brother's killers. A deal. The voice in the woods? Sure. Okay, so I made a deal with a voice in the woods. Okay. That didn't explain the decrepit house and the cosplayer. So then why am I here? Where am I? Where is Nyarbalad? Nyarbalta. Nyarbal. <laughs> Ni. Ar. Bal. Te. Ni. Ni. Eris sighed dramatically and covered their face. The old one, Nyarbalta, a forgotten god of the swamps. Okay. What I what have I been talking about again? We were getting off track. So why am I here? You made a deal. You're here until that deal is completed. Here where? Uh, Erisite for a very long time. Mir. That's where you are. This, um, place is called Mir. Okay, is Mir the building or a place? Like, more of a place than this building. Mir. Mir. <laughs> Mir. 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 All right. Maybe it was a street name? It didn't matter. Why wouldn't they give me any straight answers? Okay, so... I don't exactly have any money for a cab. How do I get back home? You don't. What do you mean I don't? You can't leave. You made a deal. You're here until it's fulfilled. Oh, oh, I don't think so. Fulfilled how? Where is this god? I want to speak to it. Era shook their head. <sighs> Humans. I feel you, man. They opened the door and stepped out, and for a moment I thought they were just going to leave me with all these questions, but then they motioned for me to follow. We entered a narrow, long hallway. At one end, there was a door, and at the other, the hallway opened out into a larger room. That was where we seemed to be headed. Oh. Well, that's a terrifying, pink, pointy spider. We entered the large room. It looked like a dining room, maybe? Along one wall, there was a doorway that was full of rubble. On another wall, there was a large fireplace where a table and chairs were set up. I like that those are the first things she notices and not the giant pink pointy spider thing on the table. 
The walls were cracked stone, similar to the hall in the bedroom. There were some cooking instruments by the fireplace and more closed doors. No windows. Stay here. I will summon your Balta. Okay. They started to leave through a small closed door, but before they vanished, I called out to them. I do think it's a really nice costume. You know, real fancy. <laughs> they huffed and shut the door without replying. Uh, I shrugged and looked around the room. It was cluttered with stone debris, damp but clean. It was still kind of cold, and I was glad I had my jacket. If this place had heat, it didn't work. I moved to sit at the table when I froze. Ah, finally. There was a very large pink spider crawling across its surface. <laughs> Kill it! I ain't touching that thing. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not wild in this case. If I left it alone, it would probably leave me alone. I paced around the room and looked for clues about the god and all this nonsense. Maybe it was just an eccentric rich person. Yeah, probably. Hello, oh. human. Strange woman. You look like that spider. I turned at the voice and froze. A girl, maybe slightly shorter than me, stood there. I hadn't heard her come in or get as close to me as she had. She was all dolled up like a Lolita in an anime. How strange. She really is, though. Uh, hello? Don't mind my darling little friend. She likes to meet new people. Well, I'm glad I didn't try to kill it. She set her hand on the table, and the spider happily crawled up her arm and then vanished into her hair. Ugh. I swallowed uneasily. People can be really weird about their pets. Okay. So you're the new worshipper? I'm Seta. Seta. Okay, so you were the one that I got, like, a bonus in the beginning. Interesting. So you're into revenge, eh? I mean, not revenge, but suffering, I guess. What? Hasn't Eris explained everything to you? Really? Sorry. They said I made a deal? With some old god, but come on. None of this is real. Oh, it is real. The sooner you accept that, the better. It'll increase your chances of survival. Survive? The mirror is a dangerous place for humans. She smiled at me. At least it wasn't a pointy teeth smile. You are awfully cute. Don't worry. I'm rooting for you. Thanks. I blinked, caught off guard. Cute? Dangerous? Mere? I really wanted to go home now. What are you talking about? Eris said I couldn't leave. You haven't looked outside yet, have you? Oh, you poor thing. You can try to leave, but you won't get far. No, that can't be right. I glance at all the closed doors. That one. She pointed at one of the doors. I was starting to feel a bit dizzy. I felt like the room was starting to tilt. That's hyperventilation. Maybe if I looked outside, I would know where I was. Even better, I could just leave and go home. These people were beyond weird, like they were part of some extreme costume party or something. As I walked toward the door, Seda called out to me. Please be careful. We haven't had a new guest in such a long time. Now, because of the mutation system, are the people here, like, were they humans that made a deal with Nier Balta? Or... Have they always been like this? I'm kind of leaning towards the former, which is interesting. I ignored her and kept going. Hmm. I'm getting, you know what? I was trying to figure out what this game was giving me. It's giving me strong soul set vibes, like very much so. I pushed open the large heavy door and stepped out onto a set of stone steps. The slippery steps caught me by surprise, and I stumbled down them, struggling not to fall. Finally, on firm ground, I looked around, and it was almost as if my lungs had deflated. I couldn't breathe. The air was heavy and wet. 
The sky was a dirty green with no sun, moon, or stars in sight. The ground was hard, and the stone of the steps had been damp. Behind me loomed a stone structure that looked capable of collapsing at any moment. I took a few steps away and tried to piece together what I was seeing. This wasn't home. I was nowhere near home. I wasn't even in the same... country? Planet? This couldn't be right. I couldn't stay here, no! There were no buildings, no roads, and nothing in the sky. The further I looked, the less I could clearly make out. It was as if everything ended in a blur. A low buzzing and scratching were the only sounds I could hear. They were not like the hum of cicadas or chirps of birds I knew. It was as if the ground I stood on was contorting somewhere deep and groaning at the effort. There was a faint stench of rot and sulfur, and it seemed to come from everywhere, as if that was just the smell of the place. I didn't know what else to do, so I started walking. The ground began to give slightly as I stepped, so I slowed down. Each step squelched and it only got worse. I tried to navigate to drier ground, but I couldn't without turning around. If only I had worn better shoes. I passed a few more trees and then came to water. A dirty brown water that was eerily still. I looked to each side, but the swamp stretched on and on as far as I could see. I glanced back at the water and felt the inevitable began to settle over me. I'd need to get into that. A twig snapped by my side and I jumped ready to fight if I needed to. Oh, hello. A large, beautiful, pure white horse stood there as if it hadn't snuck up on me. The absurdity of it made me laugh. <laughs> what are you doing out here? It was such a beautiful animal, but I hadn't seen any trace of horses or stables back at the mansion. Could there be another ho house out here? Was it wild? Why is my screen so bright? It's okay. I took a slow step towards it, afraid I would scare it, but it stood confidently. It shook its head gently, almost as if it was showing off its silky mane. I've never seen a horse so close before, and I had no idea how to ride it. But there was a saddle, and it could take me away. Maybe to another house. Maybe through the swamp, just away. What a good horse. I reached out, wanting to feel the... Did horses have fur? <laughs> no. It stood contently, as if waiting. I could trust it. I knew I could. It'd take me somewhere safe. Those big, soft eyes were telling me to climb on, to feel its skin. I'm like, no, I don't trust this. It's too pure looking for this place. My fingers almost grazed the horse when I was suddenly pulled back off of my feet and flung backwards. Whoever that was, thank you. Thank you. Double thank you. <laughs> Who's this guy? Fuck. I had crashed into a tree trunk. A tea, a tea tunk. Yes. I managed to sit up enough to see a large man in all black stand between me and the horse. His back was turned to me and he was speaking to the animal. Go back to the swamp, Nuckin. <laughs> the man in black. Hey! I scrambled to my feet, watching the horse start to back away. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Saving your life, new blood. <laughs> the horse whinnied and scampered back into the dense forest. Gone. Excuse me? You're the new worshipper that I heard about, aren't you? Humans don't just stumble on this place, so it has to be you. Eliodora, right? You have me at a disadvantage, uh, disadvantage, man in black. Just Ellie. How did you find out about me so fast? And who are you exactly? I dusted myself off, careful not to take my eyes off of him. I really, really didn't like to be called a worshipper, but there was no reason to correct him right now. All right, Ellie. Call me Tristan. And a friend. Tristan. Nice. A friend? I want to leave this place as badly as you do. Why don't we help each other? I studied him, unsure of his real motive. Eris said I couldn't leave. Are you trapped here like I am? Tristan spread his arms out, looking at me as if I was stupid. I am. You can trust me. I'm human like you. Your eyes say differently, sir. <laughs> yeah, as he spoke, his eyes glowed. 
For a moment, I considered the others. Seta, Eris, they all... They had all been in costume, hadn't they? Of everyone I had met, he had to look the most human. But... The horse, the house, the... It couldn't be real, could it? He wasn't human. None of them were. The realization hit me like a sudden burst of cold water, but I tried my best not to show it on my face. Right now, I just had to figure out what Tristan was trying to say. He was either lying to me or something else was going on. I say we call him out on it. I'm selfish. I'm not an idiot. You aren't human. You have eyes. Use them. I am. <sighs> I'm not interested in playing some weird guessing game. If you want to escape so badly, why did you get rid of the perfectly good horse? I thought you said you weren't an idiot. Well, damn. Excuse me? That white horse? That was a nuckin, not a horse. So? If you had touched it, it would have dragged you into the swamp, drowned you, and eaten you. Well, I knew that. Of course it would have. It must have been weak. Its glamour on you wasn't very strong. I thought I'd have to restrain you. Am I not pure human? <laughs> Good, I guess. So, escape? Which way? He shook his head, looking back over his shoulder. It's not that easy. This swamp goes on forever and surrounds a mansion. And don't even think about getting into the water. You wouldn't last a minute. Nuckin isn't the only creature out here. Okay, so what now? He shrugged his shoulders. I don't know yet. There has to be a way, and I'm going to find it. Two people looking is better than one. Now I shrugged. If what he said was true, then I had no way of walking out of this place. So I'd have to go back. I guess I should go back to the mansion then. Yeah, that'll be safer. I'll show you the way. I will accept. Thanks. Alright, we got some affection with Tristan. I could have made it on my own, but being alone in these woods wasn't exactly ideal. He turned and started walking without another word. I joined him and tried to match his quick, quiet pace. When I glanced over at him, he looked like he was deep in thought. I didn't know anything about him, but he didn't give off a dangerous vibe quite like the others. This was different. He was just... confusing. So, what's your deal? What? My deal? How'd you end up trapped here? You make a deal like I did? He opened his mouth, but instead of speaking, he only took a breath. I... well... If you want me to trust you, you probably shouldn't lie to me. He smirked at me and shook his head. Fine. I don't remember. Bullshit. No, really. I've been here too long. This place messes with your mind. I believe that, because we had to really focus just to remember how we got here in the first place. You really can't remember? No. Can you? I knew I had made a deal. I... I stopped walking for a second. I made a deal... with Nier Balta. For something... important. My brother. I... What's happening? I can remember, but it's like it happened several months ago instead of- I told you. This place messes with your mind. If you really want to remember, you should write it down. It's a good idea, man. I guess I should. <sighs> okay, before we continue, I want to look at my stats again. Alright, so we're over here somewhere. Okay, alright. We were outside of the mansion now, and he glanced over at some cracked stained glass. I'll find you if I learn anything. Could you do the same? I will. I wasn't sure how I would find him, but this place wasn't that big. He left. I thought about stopping him to ask for, mer for, for, mer for more information, but decided against it. I didn't want to waste time chatting while my memory was fading. That creek, though. 
I walked inside feeling more lost than I had when I stepped outside. If Tristan was right, then there was no way of getting home on foot, but he seemed to think there was another way out. If I had been brought here, then there had to be some kind of... door. I just needed to find it. There you are! I've been looking for you! Sorry, Eris. What is this place? I told you! No! What is this place? My memories are all fuzzy, we're surrounded by swamps, and a crazy horse monster tried to eat me! Mir, as I told you before... Wait, Nakin? How did you resist the glamour? I didn't really resist it as much as I was saved by Tristan. Should I tell them? I don't want to claim to have magical powers, because then that's just going to be a big fat old lie. Actually, I was pulled away by Tristan. Oh, you were saved by our sad little puppy. Hmm. Dog, huh? Werewolf? What else? What's the, like, the obvious dog one? Maybe he's a werewolf. I guess? Seta, this is Eliodora. How'd you know my full name? What do you prefer to go by? Ellie is fine. She is the new worshipper. I want to go home. I offered my blood not to move into a creepy swamp mansion. You can go home once the deal is done. I really hate how he just appears out of nowhere. Or it. I froze. It felt like a nightmare stood before me and I'd forgotten how to breathe. It was the voice from the woods. Even Seta was like, I'm out of here. I see Seta has run off. <laughs> a shame. Eliodora, you have promised your blood in exchange for your request. I wanted to scream out, Ellie, call me Ellie. But my brother's killers. It suddenly felt very clear in my mind. All of the fog was gone. Okay. The killers are currently suffering and will continue to do so, as you wished. How do I know that's true? I held up my end of the deal. Now it is your turn. I started to tremble. My blood? Was this thing going to kill me? I don't want to die! Your Bolta isn't going to kill you! I only require your blood. But... It won't hurt. If that is what you are worried about. So... So... You take some of my blood, and then I can go home? I require all of your blood. I thought you said you weren't going to kill me. Not all at once. Your Balta will take a little at a time. You'll feel a bit sleepy, and then your Balta will wait for you to recover. I guess that makes sense. Keeping his food supply alive. Uh, or their food supply. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what near Bolton is. I shook my head. I just wanted to go home. None of this could be real, but it felt real. It felt like I was trapped in a nightmare. When can I leave? I want to go back home. You are in my domain. You will remain until I have taken all of your blood. About two or three human years. Oh, well, that's not very long. What? I shall take some now to quack the human. Whoa, 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 whoa. No! That might be wise. No! The god's eyes glowed slightly, and that was enough. I didn't think. I ran. The swamp was all around me, but I just had to take my chances. No way was I staying here. I ran, stumbling on rocks and fallen logs, just barely managing to stay on my feet. I saw the dirty water and smelled the heavy stench of decay and rot. The swamp! Go! This all had to be some kind of sick joke. It wasn't real. There was no way it could be real. A nightmare, a hallucination, madness. Not real! My muscles screamed and there was a faint pain in my ankle. It didn't matter. I just kept running. It was all too fucked up. I wasn't staying here to be a human blood bag for that thing. They couldn't make me. 
Before I could run into the water, I suddenly felt incredibly heavy. I stumbled back. The world was beginning to spin. I crawled towards the water's edge, trying to ignore the pounding in my head. What was happening? A wave of nausea began to cascade over me. I dug into the moist earth, feeling the dirt sink under my nails. Ugh. I glanced up and saw a shadow of the monster god. Its wet eyes glowed faintly, and the branches that made up the body twitched in a gross display like a dying insect. I fell forward, my eyes closing, and everything going dark around me. Eee, exciting. I sat up. My head was throbbing with a dull ache. Everything flooded back to me, but it was kind of fuzzy. I was back in the bed and back in the mansion. The god took my blood, and now I was here. Again. Someone had moved me while I was unconscious. The thought made my skin crawl. Damn it! I buried my head in my hands as the weight of my situation dropped over me. I was really trapped. There was no way out. My mind began to race, unwilling to accept that I couldn't just leave somehow. I wanted to go home. I just wanted to go home. My anger exploded into an awful depression as tears threatened to leak out of my eyes. No, I did not have time to cry. I roughly wiped up my face and kicked the blankets off of me. The damp, smelly, heavy blankets. Despair would not help me get the fuck out of here. As soon as I got to my feet, I felt weak. My hand shook slightly. I needed to eat something. All I really wanted to do was tear the room apart. Break everything, tear it all up. Teach them a lesson for dragging me back here. I glanced over and the original package of food was gone, but another had been set in its place. I really needed to eat. I staggered over to the table and collapsed into the chair. There was a large sandwich and freshly cut fruit and vegetables wrapped up for me. Despite the overall decrepit and moldy state of the mansion, the food looked pristine. Eris is a great cook. Yeah? Hey! You're the guy that I've been intrigued by the most. <laughs> Mr. Peacock Feathers Man. He gives me strong Damien vibes just by his look from Magical Diary. Very strong. I'm just like, hey yo. I looked up at the door, which was open. It really shouldn't have opened so quietly. In the doorway stood a man with purple hair and a twisted horn sticking out of his forehead. I'm just here. Yes. He walked inside without invitation. Not a vampire. His movements were graceful, and I was too confused to react. As he got closer, his gaze narrowed on a dark bottle of wine that rested near my plate of food. He grabbed it, and paused to look over the cork that sealed it. I could only guess that it was wine. For this. Okay. Hey! Who the hell are you? Negative with Karen. Okay. He likes aggressiveness. Gotcha. I will file that away for later. Who the hell are you? No one for you to worry about. Karen, don't take the human's wine. Thank you, Eris. Why did you have to give her the good stuff? The human has a name. They both ignored me. Don't you have a few bottles hiding in your room? Go tend to them. He rolled his eyes and left without another word. He did send a longing look to the bottle of wine, though. I'm glad you are awake again. No thanks to you. It is thanks to me that you woke up in bed with food and not half eaten by Nookin in the swamp. How often is that supposed to happen? Whenever Nyarbolta requires it. I shook my head and glanced over at the bottle of wine. I wasn't in the mood for this. I really wasn't. If you need anything, just call for me. How will you know? I'll hear it. Don't worry about that. As long as you're within the mansion's walls, I'll hear it. Okay, so any planning and scheming I want to do should be done outside. Getcha. I shrugged. Okay. Whatever. Maybe it was magic bird person powers. At this point, who was I to question any of this bullshit? How many other people are wandering around here? Excuse me? 
that spider girl Seta, the purple haired guy who wanted my liquor, Tristan, you and the god, anyone else? Harris paused a minute, frowning. Then I realized they were counting. Oh, Brenton. He's probably hiding up in the tower. That is where he usually is. Brenton. With that said, they left. The door shut, and I noticed there was no form of lock. Would it even matter? I stared at the food and picked at it half-heartedly. If I wasn't starving, I wouldn't have bothered. I really didn't want to eat, but it gave me the energy to think. There had to be either a passage back to the woods or maybe some kind of... spell. This was all just so fucked up. This time I heard the door open. Hello, Ellie. Still alive, I see. Unless I am actually dead and this is hell, yeah? She laughed. <laughs> You're very funny. We aren't in hell. Just another dimension of sorts. Another dimension? Mm-hmm. Touching, but not of your world. Any idea how to get back to my world? Oh, you want to cross the old one? So I'm taking that you aren't a human. You're from another dimension? Or from this place? I don't know. I didn't say anything. This felt like a trap. I'm not saying there is a way. Or that you might find that way inside a book. I'm also not telling you to be careful who you trust here, Ellie. Okay. I just realized she also reminds me of Shira. <laughs> Same color scheme, but she's a little creepier than Shira. She smiled and gave me a little wave. I will simply tell you goodbye for now. Wait! She was gone. Damn it. Did she literally just come in here to dangle some information over my head and then vanish? What was her problem? Alone again, I had nothing to do but deal with the food. I forced myself to take a few more bites, then I stood up. If Eris and that weird swamp monster thought I was just going to sit around and let them drain me dry, they were stupid. The hallway was empty, and only the sound of distant dripping water could be heard. I started to head towards one of the closed doors when another one of them opened. You must be Brenton. A man with his head on fire stalked past me without so much as a glance my way. Horns and fire hair. Hmm. Your head is on fire! He stopped and looked at me. A human? Your head! I pointed, but seriously, how did he not feel that? Definitely a human. Fire does not harm me. <laughs> man on fire. Hold on, let me look at your hands. Ooh. Hmm, I wonder what you are. He ran a hand through the flames as if they were his hair. That doesn't hurt? I pointed at the top of his head. He started to speak, but someone else interrupted him. Oh no! Was he thinking too hard again? Dang. Shouldn't you be passed out somewhere? Eris gave all the good wine to the human and has the rest locked up. I'm going to snap. So? Come on, Brenton. Ask them for a bottle and let me have it, will you? <laughs> it just keeps inching away. So this guy with the fire hair must be Brenton. I doubt they'll fall for that again. It's worth a try, isn't it? Excuse me, if you two boys are done? They both stopped and looked at me. Where are all of the books? A big reader, are you? If you ask Eris for books, they'll bring you some. I would like to look at all of the books, actually. I don't want any dirty humans tramping around my bedroom. What? He sleeps in the library. Ah. But I actually have a lot of books in my tower. If you tell me what book you're looking for, and give me that wine, I'll look in my room for you. Don't believe him. He's just after the wine. Just because I've told you that lie before doesn't mean I'm dishonest with everyone. Mm-hmm. What? You're just so easy to trick, Scales. 
Oh, dragon. Must be. Must be a dragon. Don't call me that! I don't know exactly what book I'm looking for. Well, that doesn't help. I'll know it when I see it. Maybe I shouldn't have trusted Seta. They were both looking at me like I was an idiot. But I didn't want them to know I was looking for a way to escape. What have they told Eris or Nier Balta? I'm just looking for ways to protect myself here. I almost died in the swamp, and no one has told me anything but death, death, death. It is pretty dangerous. So, about the wine. <laughs> oh, Karen. I ignored him. There has to be some books on the things that live here, what this place is and everything. Right? Neither of them said anything. How am I supposed to defend myself? Huh? I don't know any of the weird rules or anything. You're safe inside the mansion. Probably. And Eris will take care of you. Most of the time. <laughs> I was waiting for to say, probably. Why are you so worried? I'm getting a bit bored, so... <sighs> Karen walked away. He was completely unhelpful. I think that's how you say his name, anyway. <sighs> I looked at Brenton. I moved my arms wide and pleaded with him. Help me out, man. Come on. I want to look at books. He paused and looked me over briefly. I have some books in my tower. I'm not sure what they're all about, but if you want to come up... To your tower? What? Sounds cool. That sounds really cool. But you have books? I do. Well, lead the way. He looked down the hall towards the dining area and then turned around towards the door at the opposite end. Okay. This way. I think I'll like Brenton. Seems like a sweetie. We walked up a long set of stairs. It felt like it took forever. I was huffing pretty badly, but Brenton seemed oblivious. I was struggling to keep up. Hmm. He's got a record player. That's amazing. <laughs> I stepped into a cluttered mess. The room had stacks of stuff. Everywhere. It was ridiculous. I glanced over at Brenton, but he wasn't reacting as if this was a shock. I had no idea how I was going to find a book in all of this junk. There's clearly, like, 15 books right under that record player. Just looking at it all made my skin itchy. The walls were littered with holes that had glimpses of the sky. There were scorch marks scattered around. If you want to just sit. He knocked some stuff onto the floor and a chair appeared. Right here. I'll see if I can dig something out. I sat. Honestly, I needed to sit down. The room was making me a bit queasy. It didn't smell bad, it actually felt warmer and drier than the rest of the mansion. There was just so much stuff. He knocked some stuff around and then brought me a few books, each differently sized. I took them when he handed them to me. One looked like a cookbook for cakes and pies in another language. Then a dictionary with a sizable chunk of pages missing. Last one was a kid's book about some pigs and a wolf. These aren't really going to help. I can keep looking. How? How would you find anything in this place? I know it's a bit of a mess right now. Where do you sleep? There. He pointed at a pile of blankets in the center. There was a bed there if I looked hard enough. I just shook my head. He cleared his throat. I can't help it. I... Uh, uh... He spread his arms out. I'm a dragon. Yeah! It's just my nature. Knew it. Dragon? I know I look human right now. Yes, with those hands. Your head is on fire. That doesn't look human. Not to mention the horns. I know this place is hard for new worshippers. That word again. I don't like it. Why? I stood up. I had intended to pace, but there wasn't space for it. I don't like any of this. I just want to go home. Oh. He took a step closer, towering over me. His body radiated a lot of heat, actually. I know it's hard. But if you're careful, you can go home when the deal is over, right? So why not just relax? If I'm careful? You know, don't die. 
stay in the mansion. Don't piss off Nyarbalte. Or Eris. Maybe stay away from the others. Oh, sure. I'll just sit around for a few years. It might not be so bad. He grinned at me. He really just didn't get it at all, did he? How thick can a guy be? He was sort of trying to be helpful, though. I think. Um... I don't want to storm out. I'm trying to think if I should do try to explain it to him or ask to search for books on your own. I'm going to do this one. Ah, uh, negative. Darn. I thought maybe if I tried to explain it to him, he would be upset that I was like... He's like, well, I don't get it. You should just <laughs> behave. Oh, well. I really didn't have time for this. Why don't I just dig around and see if I can find more books myself? He frowned and then stepped away from me. I was ready to start digging through the piles when a heavy hand fell on my shoulder. No. I won't hurt anything. No. I started to protest, but I was quickly ushered towards the door. Wait! The door was slammed in my face. Okay, note to self. Don't dig through a dragon's hoard. I guess he had issues with people going through his things. I wasn't sure, but I had a feeling I should just leave. I walked down the winding steps until I got back down to the hallway. Well, at least the werewolf and the spider lady like me. Before I could think about what to do next, I noticed Karen exiting my bedroom, carrying the bottle of wine Eris had set out for me. Ahem. He only smirked at me and didn't look at all embarrassed at being caught. You want it, human? Come and get it. He uncorked it and took a swig while swaying suggestively and walking backwards. Yep, definitely like this guy. It might have been sexy if he didn't stumble to find the door he wanted. I have a name. It's Ellie. Stop calling me human. He didn't react to what I had said and instead opened the door and vanished behind it. He left the door slightly ajar. I shrugged and started to walk back to my own room. If I needed a drink later, I could just ask Eris, I suppose. But... Brenton had said that Karen slept in the library. Karen had practically invited me. But was I sure I wanted to follow that guy into a strange room? Yes. I took a hesitant step towards the door Karen had stepped through. The books were in there. I had to do it. Just do it and don't think about it. I pushed the door open. The rusted hinges groaned in protest. Wow, now this is a nice place. Schwanky. I took a few steps inside when the door slammed shut behind me, making me jump. Hi. <laughs> you look great. Um, where'd you get those gloves? Hello. Hi. He stood with a bottle of wine gripped in his hand. His other hand held the door shut behind me. Had he been standing there waiting for me? I swallowed and tried not to appear nervous, even if the way he was looking at me made my skin crawl. Why was it different here? Now? He smiled and moved closer, putting space between me and the door. So good of you to visit me. So close. He held my bottle out to me and waved it slightly. I could hear the liquid inside slosh around. Oh, he's doing the thing that they, that horse did. So you're not, you, that horse didn't have a horn. Are you a unicorn? Some kind of evil unicorn? <laughs> it felt like there was a haze enveloping me and I was struggling to remember why I had even come in here. Karen, I- Go on, take a sip. He put it to my lips, lifting gently. I moved my arm to push it away, but then took the bottle from him and drank from it. That's good. Now, what does it taste like? 
It didn't taste like any wine I had ever had before. Including the time I had drank from this very bottle earlier. What is this? He grinned and answered simply. Wine. <laughs> Great, thanks. Uh, he reached out to me and ran his thumb over my lower lip. Then brought his thumb to his mouth and licked it. How oddly sensual. Not even the really, really good stuff. Eris buries that out back somewhere, I think. Who makes use of it, then? Wine? Wine. He urged me to take another drink, so I did. It was making me feel warm. It was really cozy in this room, not like any other room I had been in. Come over here. Don't you think standing is just too much effort? I'm in so much trouble with this guy. <laughs> he led me deeper into the library. The lights danced around the room as the flames of the candles flickered. There was a lit fireplace. Maybe that's where the warmth was coming from? Karen? I wasn't sure what I wanted to ask him. I had come in here for a reason. I just couldn't quite remember it right now. Shh, sit down with me. Take another drink. Where is this gonna lead? He reclined against a large sofa that sagged with his weight. There were pillows and blankets lined up for comfort all over the room. He pushed them aside so that I could sit beside him. I started to sit, but... No. Wait. I... I came in here... He took my hand and pushed the bottle of wine into it. Drink with me. It's really good wine, right? I nodded and took another drink. Normally, I could hold my liquor, but this stuff was going straight to my head. I felt so heavy, so I sat down beside him. The sofa seemed to want to swallow me, it was so soft. Karen was watching me, so I handed back the bottle to draw attention away from myself. I wasn't comfortable when he looked at me so intently. He took a deep drink and then set the bottle down. The endless bottle. He leaned closer to me, placing a hand against my cheek. Something... This wasn't right, but- You poor human. You don't like it here, do you? No. He saw right through me. He knew my thoughts and my secrets. I could trust him. I should trust him. Look at his face. That is the face of a trustworthy person. I can make your stay here very comfortable. If you'll let me. Comfortable. He nodded. I'll help you. And in return, you can help me. You wouldn't mind that, would you? <laughs> Her face. <laughs> That's so funny. No, I'll help you. I would help him. I had to help him. Anything he wanted. Next time you see Eris, I want you to tell the... Tell me what? Thank you, Eris. <laughs> Snap! The fog around the room and my mind seemed to drop with a cold splash of water. I jumped up, feeling caught and confused. Damn it! <laughs> so close! Karen, how many times do I have to tell you to stop trying to enchant the worshippers? But he's so enchanting on his own. En... enchant? I felt... my head was starting to hurt. I looked down at Karen, who only grinned at me. Had he been trying to... I touched my cheek where his hand had just been. What had he been planning to do? I snatched the wine bottle from where he had put it and... <sighs> I don't want to throw it at the wall. That's just a waste of wine. Do I hand it to him or hit him with it? Here. Take this. It's what you want. Now leave me alone. Oh, how kind. Yeah, I'm starting to figure you out. Eris sighed and shook their head at him. Karen didn't seem to notice. Eris grabbed my elbow and tugged it, clearly wanting me to follow. I glared at Karen. He had some serious nerve. The bastard didn't even look upset. 
He didn't object as Aerith practically pulled me back out into the hall. As fresh air began to hit my lungs, I suddenly remembered. I had wanted to look for a book. The door was shut. There had been books, though. Lots of them. Damn it! You need to be more careful. I'm not going to be able to help you out all the time. Don't let your guard down here. I didn't say anything. I didn't trust myself to speak. I was too angry. They glanced over at my door and spoke. Your dinner is in there. Thank you, Eris. Then they left. I watched them leave. Their steps were light and graceful. I was thankful Eris had stopped Karen, but at the same time I was furious that I was here at all. There was nothing left to do right now, and eating might help clear my head. I opened my door and stepped into what had become my room. I stepped through the door and saw a plate of simple food laid out. I approached the table, falling heavily into the small chair. It was a chunk of bread and a large bowl of stew. The bread felt rough, as if homemade. I took a few sips of the soup, and it was edible. It might have been good, but it was as if I had lost my taste buds. I was too stressed, scared, and focused on finding an escape to notice any kind of flavor. Karen must have taken the older bottle of wine, because I gave it to him, and there was a new one set out for me. I filled a glass and took a careful drink. It was weak and nothing like what I had drank in Karen's room. I actually felt a bit disappointed. There was something about the wine Karen had given me that... lingered. The food was almost go gone when the door creaked open. Seta stepped through and, quiet and quickly shut it behind her. Care to knock next time? She ignored me. I saw you come out of the library. Did you get the book? I scowled and the food I had just eaten suddenly felt like a cold, sour weight in my gut. Why don't we just stop these games and you tell me exactly what I'm supposed to be looking for? Seta grinned and moved closer to me, almost seeming to glide. You get more flies with honey, you know? Haha. <laughs> took a deep breath and tried to speak tactfully. It would be easier for me to find the book if you would just help me. That's better, I guess. Oh, right. She likes suffering and things and being wild. Darn. I missed out. There is an unmarked leather-bound book of rituals. It's very, very old and handwritten. It should be in the library. Leather-bound book of rituals in the library. It was one thing to look for a specific book, but something like that? If it didn't have any outward markings, how would I ident identify it? A better question is, why was Seta telling me any of this to begin with? Why are you helping me? What could she possibly gain from helping me find the book? She didn't seem to care for near Balta, but if I went missing, wouldn't she get in trouble? Something just wasn't right here. I waited for her to reply. You poor little mouse. I just hate seeing so many wretched humans pass through here only to die horrible, horrible deaths. They never last long. Wretched humans, eh? Won't you get in trouble for helping me? Darling, it's so wonderful to know you're worried. I can take care of myself. Out of the kindness of her heart, really, was I going to believe that? No, I wasn't. Still, now wasn't the time to discuss that. I wanted to know more about that book. So the book will tell me how to get home? There should be a ritual in it that'll help. I'm not completely sure. I've never managed to get my hands on it. So you don't know? You're just guessing? I know about the book. I know it contains powerful rituals. Isn't that enough? What other leads could you possibly have? I could wait until near Balta is done with the blood pack. You'd rather try to survive this place for a few years? She sighed, but the grin never left her face long. <sighs> I've done my best to help you, my sweet. Let me know if you get your hands on the book, won't you? Hmm. So what do you want it for? I didn't answer, and she didn't wait for one. She gave me a small, elegant wave and left. 
I was alone again and felt uneasy. I was also starting to feel incredibly tired. I glanced at the bed. How long had I been awake? Passing out was probably not the most restful way to sleep. Then I noticed it. There were no clocks. No sun, no moon, no stars. I checked my phone, but it was already dead. Stupid battery. There was no way to tell how much time was passing. Maybe it worked differently here. I suppose I could ask Eris. Ellie. Uh, hmm? Damn it! I practically jumped out of my skin. I grabbed my chest and resisted the urge to throw something at them. Knock! Please can't any of you people knock? Seriously. Sorry. I am here to take your plates. They pointed down at the discarded food. If you would rather clean up after yourself, by all means. Um, sure. I frowned and felt bad for lashing out. I don't mind cleaning up my own messes. Eris grimaced. I didn't think you would actually offer. Surprise! I'm capable of washing my own dishes if- No. Uh, no, I'd really rather I do it. You won't do it right. Sorry. Excuse me? You'll do it wrong. And probably leave the kitchen a mess, so don't bother. I'll do it. They snatched the tray off of the table as if I was preparing to fight them for it. I raised my arms. All right, then. I wasn't going to fight someone over the right to wash j dishes, jeez. Since they were here, I might as well ask them. How do I tell time here? I don't know when I should sleep or- Sleep when you're tired. You'll get used to the timelessness eventually. Seriously? Yes. Time stands still here, in a way. It also moves all at once. It's too complicated for you to understand. I rolled my eyes. Fine. Sleep whenever I want, got it. Okay, then. Eris walked out, tray with dishes in hand, and they didn't look the slightest bit bothered by my attitude. I crawled into bed and closed my eyes. I was tired. My body, my mind, and every cell in my body longed for sleep. But I could only toss and turn, becoming a tangle of damp blankets and clothes. I wanted to get up, but I was just so exhausted. I should be thinking of a way to get back into the library. I should be trying to find a way out of here. There was a gentle tapping at my door, causing me to bolt upright. Is someone there? Wow, someone knew how to knock! It's me. Ah, oh, sweet. I was hoping it was you. Tristan? I untangled myself and managed to get the door open. I felt so heavy from being so tired. I brought you this. He handed me a small vial of dark liquid. It's a mild sedative, but it'll help you sleep. It's hard to sleep here, so... Eris makes it for me. I thought you might like it, too. This boy is just too good. He looked me over. Uh, did I wake you? I've been trying to sleep. I'm so tired. Drink that, then. It'll help. It's similar to mild sleep medicine you can get back home. Do you think we're still on Earth somehow? How can we be? He motioned towards the window that we couldn't see out of. I shrugged. I suppose you're right. Maybe on another planet? This time Tristan shrugged. I've asked, but Eris only tells me that this is Mir. Planet? Dimension? Who knows? I nodded. What else was there to say? I glanced down at the vial. Could I trust such a thing? After drinking the weird wine in Karen's room, did I really want to risk another strange liquid? Thank you, Tristan, for bringing this to me. I know it's hard here, but we'll find a way out. Right. Had Seda mentioned the book to him? Should I tell him about it? What if he found it and abandoned me? What if this was all some kind of trap? I gripped the vial tighter and tried to decide what to do. I think I was going to say we shouldn't tell him in the house, but I realized Seta told us while we were in the house, so Eris and Nirbalta already know about all, the, all about the book thing, so. Sure. I had to tell him. He might know of a way to get it from Karen. Actually, Seta told me about a book. 
He scoffed. He said it did. You can't trust her. She likes to toy with people. I gathered. You don't think the book is what she says it is? He frowned and seemed to be thinking it over. I don't know. I guess it's worth checking it out. Was that all she said? I told him everything she had told me. What do you think? We should check it out. Uh, unfortunately, Karen won't let me anywhere near his room. In fact, he won't let anyone in there. Interesting. He lured me in there, actually. Earlier. I might be able to get into his room again. Tristan rubbed the back of his neck. I don't know. Karen is... not safe. Is anyone here safe? Good point. I felt wobbly on my feet. I glanced at the bed, then down at the vial in my hand. It's okay. You must be really tired. We can speak more later. Thanks, man. I nodded, unable to argue. After some good sleep, I might be able to think straight again. Okay. Thank you again. He moved to the door and then paused, giving me a hesitant grin. <laughs> sleep well, new blood. I smiled weakly and waved. He left, and again I was alone. I looked down at the small vial in my hand. Some kind of sleep medicine? Should I risk it? I might not sleep well if I didn't. Tristan said it was similar to a mild sedative on Earth. It should be safe enough, still. I say we risk it for the biscuit. Good, I needed some wild on my side. <laughs> How are my stats doing anyway? Yeah, now I've got I went from there to here. <laughs> I'm just all over the place. <sighs> what was the worst that could happen? I pulled the lid off of the vial and drank the potion. It actually tasted like nighttime cold medicine. I sipped some of the wine to help cut the sharp taste and then crawled back into bed. My body started to relax, and I fell asleep almost as soon as my head hit the pillow. It could all have been a horrible dream. It wasn't. I was still here in this awful place. My stomach grumbled and I glanced at the table. There was no food left. I'd have to venture out to find some. There was no way for me to know how long I had slept. Hours, days, who knew? It irritated me that I didn't know. It was like my mind was constantly fuzzy here and I had stopped sleeping and I had hoped sleeping would help, but it hadn't. Maybe eating would help. I kicked off the heavy blankets and dragged myself out of bed by sheer will. My body felt stiff and slow. I stretched and rolled my shoulders. It helped a little bit, but food would probably help more. I headed out to the hallway. As I stepped out, I heard a door close behind me. I glanced back and saw Brenton had emerged shortly after I had. He looked as if I had caught him doing something bad. I waited a moment for him to speak, but he looked ready to run back up to his tower. Brenton? He cleared his throat. <clears throat> well, Eudora. Eris must have told him my name. I couldn't remember if I had bothered to correct him before. Just call me Ellie. Uh, okay. Waiting for him to say something else might take a long time. Do you know the way to the kitchen? Oh, uh, I do. I, I was actually... Eris refuses to bring meals to my room, so oh. I have to get them myself. I was headed there now. Interesting. Perfect. We can go together. He looked a bit hesitant and eyed me for a moment. I suppose I can find my own way. No! I mean, I'll help you. It's this way. He led me down the hallway. He kept glancing at me through the corner of his eye. He might have been trying to be discreet, but he was failing miserably. When we got to the dining hall, a far door burst open and Eris rushed into the room. Don't even think about it. I just mopped the floor. But... But... <laughs> just stay there... Both of you. I'll get you something. Thank you, Aris. Then they were gone, slamming the door they had come through. Aris takes their kitchen very seriously, I guess. Brenton nodded and glanced away. He was looking back down the hall towards the tower. Um, 
Sure. Will you sit with me? And eat? What? I don't really want to eat alone right now. But it's fine if you don't want to. No, I mean, yes, I will eat with you. If you want. <laughs> He's so adorkable. I did ask, so I do want. Huh. Right. Eris appeared and handed us each a plate. Then they vanished back into the room I could only assume was the kitchen. I started to move to the table, but Brenton seemed frozen on the spot. Come on, you said you'd stay with me. This was a good chance to get information from him. He might let his guard down while we eat. Uh, okay. He sat at the table and looked down at his plate. We had both been given an overstuffed sandwich and a small bottle of something to drink. It was brown, so it wasn't wine. Probably? Please don't tell me this is rum or something. <laughs> no. It's probably apple cider. Eris doesn't always serve wine with the meals. I took a tentative sip, and Brenton was right. This is a nice change, I think. I was never all that fond of wine. No? Then, what did you like to drink? Hard liquor is mixed with something sweet, usually. Girly drinks, I guess. I shrugged. The sandwich was so thick I had to smash it down as best as I could. It was as good as all the other food. Eris is a pretty good cook. You don't cook a sandwich, but yeah. You don't like Eris? <sighs> what could I say to that? It wasn't that I didn't like Eris. It was much more complicated than that. And why was Brenton always singing their praises anyway? I don't dislike them. I'm just frustrated about being here, I guess. It didn't seem safe to tell Brenton what I really thought, and besides... He might have information I wanted. I needed to be the one asking questions. What about Seta, though? She seems nice, maybe. He made a face. Seta? Don't trust her. Really? Why am I not surprised? She's cruel, and she lies. Just like everyone else here. I considered for a moment, but I suppose he was right. Even Tristan was lying to me in a way. Then what lie are you telling me? He choked on his food. He coughed and covered his mouth. I I'm not lying to you. You just said everyone here is a liar. That doesn't mean I am. He frowned and looked clearly offended. I'm not a liar either. Let's promise, okay? I won't lie to you if you don't lie to me. <laughs> Stare. He looked at me suspiciously. Okay. I won't lie to you. Good. He was actually pretty naive, but that might mean he could be one of the more honest ones here. If only he wasn't so fond of Eris. Would he help me if I asked him to? I continued to eat. I didn't want to bring up the book yet. He already seemed spooked. There was no reason to push the issue now. We finished our small meal in silence after that. I was too busy thinking about my next move to worry about feeling awkward about the quiet. He stood up and seemed unsure of what to do. Thanks for eating with me, Brenton. No problem, Ellie. He paused, standing there as if he wanted to say something, but then turned around and left. Then I was alone. Now I could focus on what I wanted to do next. I should probably try to find a way into the library so that I could try to find that book. Even if Seta was lying to me, it was worth a try. Once I had the book, I might know what to do after that. Now the major problem was to get past Karen. Maybe I could get one of the others to help me. Tristan claimed to want to help me. He seemed to have the same goal that I did to escape this place. Seta clearly knew more about this place than she was letting on. She was also the one who told me about the book to begin with. Brenton seemed the most trustworthy, if only because he didn't seem to want something from me. He was skittish, but maybe I could convince him to help me. Karen might have the book, which means he could have an idea on how to leave. He would probably take some convincing, though. So, which one? Ah! Thank you for playing the demo. I hope you'll play the finished game. Perfect, because I'm like, if this is going to be a choice of which one to pick, I can't do any more.
Oh, my voice is gone. Game over. I didn't die. Yay! <laughs> Cause I think you could. There was a way for you to die in the demo, and I managed not to die. So I'll take it. Sweet. Well, that was awesome. I loved it. I was really immersed in the entire thing. And voice actors are great, especially like shout out to Karen's voice actor. It's just like he gives me goosebumps, man. So good. And there you go, Kickstarter backers to be announced. So, if you liked what you saw, it is on Kickstarter right now. I will have a link to that in the description below. So if you'd like to go and give uh, Jamie some support, I hope you will do that because uh, I would love for this game to be funded. I definitely would play it when it was done. Uh, I think it is half funded right now and there's a little under two weeks left when this video will come out. Oh my goodness, my voice really is going. So I better wrap this up quick. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I thought the characters were all interesting and gorgeously creepy. And uh, I'm gonna be sad probably that Eris isn't dateable because that's, that's who I am. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I like them all. And I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. Um, I will have the links to the demo below on Steam and Itch.io and the link to the Kickstarter. So I hope you will go and check that out for yourself. Thanks again for watching, guys. And until next time, I will see you later.